Hey, welcome back, nerds. Afino here with a guide slash commentary for the Guildfest 2021 finale, The Romulus Fight. Not a big fan of this one. Kind of a huge pain. But let's get into it. So, right off the bat, Romulus, he's got cooties. If you touch him, you become Rome. Well, you become Roman. He's Rome. And this is a debuff that lasts for two turns. Now, it being a debuff, we'll play into some other stuff later, but, you know, let's set that aside for now. Being Roman has certain perks and penalties. Uh, the first of which is that starting from the end of turn one, Romulus will start using a rotation of three buffs. And these he'll give to anyone who qualifies as Roman. So on turn one, uh, he will heal everyone. On turn two, he gives everyone charge. One tick for the enemies, 50% for you. Also comes with an NP damage buff. And on turn three, um, all the Romans get attack. So pretty handy stuff. However, in order to actually use these buffs, uh, you need to not be Roman. Well, you still benefit from the buffs, but to actually do any damage to Romulus, you can't be Roman. And the reason for that is that Romulus himself has 90% damage reduction when he's fighting other Romans. So in other words, you pretty much have to wait uh, two turns between becoming Roman and being able to attack Romulus. The turn you hit him, the turn after, you're, you're stuck as Roman. So on that third turn, you get to actually hit him. Uh, however, there is a perk, one other perk to being Roman, which is that if you're Roman, you get NP damage resistance. And Romulus, because he's self-charging himself so often, uh, NP's a fair bit. Now, this is nice, but it's not a silver bullet, because you still take a fair bit of damage. And, you know, two or three rotations in, your attackers aren't going to be looking so good, even if they are sabers. And you're going to see that here. I have to figure out a way of dealing with that. Now, here, I'm pretty sure I opt to Shield Waver to get it to uh, benefit from his charge acceleration. But while that's going on, let me run over some of the other mechanics. Now, you may have noticed some clock buffs on Romulus. And those are his Enrage Timer. Now, the first couple you don't have to worry too much about. Um, ten turns in, or I should say ten ticks in, we'll get to that in a second, he gives everyone, well, all of his teammates, uh, increased healing. So if you're trying to chip them out over multiple turns, it's not going to work so well. Uh, here you'll see me intentionally trying to get the Roman trait to reduce the damage I take. But yeah. So let's talk about those ticks. Now I said 10 turns for that first buff, but it's actually a lot less. And that's because the cooldown goes down. I'm sorry, the timer goes down by however many Romans are on the field. Not total number of Roman buffs, so don't worry about that, but the total number of people who qualify as Roman. So if you look at the screen right now, that's six. So if you aren't careful about who has Roman stacks, things can spiral out of control very, very quickly. Now you might think to only do the Roma thing with your main attacker, but that comes with other disadvantages, namely that Romulus and his goons will target down whoever does not qualify as Roman. So non-Romans, they'll attack them over Romans. So if, if one of your servants stays non-Roman consistently, you'll find them at significantly lower health than the rest. So again, knowing when to make people Roman to either reduce their NP damage taken or gain his healing is pretty important, even for your off attackers. Now let's talk about his other buffs. So the second stage of his enrage is that after 20 turns from the start, he and his goons get crit chance. And 35 turns in, they all gain attack. Like, substantial attack. It's gonna hurt like a motherfucker. You really want to be on or close to his final bar by the time uh, that procs. And then there's his final enrage. After 70 turns, he gets... Well, actually, not just him. He and all of his goons get 100% damage resistance. So it's game over. You can, you can no longer win the fight from that state. 
So essentially, your job here is to finish the fight before he hits those 70 turns, or those 70 stacks, or those 70 ticks. This does mean that you're in quite a hurry. Now, unfortunately for you, Romulus, uh, it's in his interest to make sure you don't deal too much damage to him at once. So, when you break his first bar, he'll drain your meter by like 50%. And he'll also gain a pretty hefty damage resistance buff. Um, I believe it's a flat 50k off each hit. Uh, in return, you get like fucking overcharged, but that's not super helpful. So, to get around this... You really want an attacker that focuses on their Noble Phantasm. So let's talk a little bit about team building before I get too mired down in the mechanics. The ideal attacker for this fight is someone who has Invuln Pierce, which we'll get to when we get to Phase 3, a Saber, because they're going to be taking a lot of damage and they want class advantage, hard mitigation to deal with um, unexpected NPs, a single target Noble Phantasm, and being NP focused. Now, you don't have to hit all five of those check marks, but for each one you don't have, your life gets harder. And if you are missing too many of those boxes, your life gets very difficult, and it's going to be hard to meet that DPS requirement for this fight. Now, as you can see, the ideal attacker for this particular encounter is actually Musashi, because she has Invuln Pierce, she's a Saber, she has an Invuln, a single target NP, and uh, even a Cleanse to boot, which is quite handy. Now, the reason why you want an NP-focused attacker is that you can't necessarily rely on card RNG. Okay, so what I did there was I found out that I could not kill that first Roman, the uh, Saber. Real unfortunate, because it's actually in your interest to kill the trash mobs whenever you can. Because for every one you kill, it'll actually add time to Romulus's um, enraged buffs. Speaking of the enemies, it's worth noting that some of them, uh, the, the giants and the sabers and stuff, will attempt to taunt your allies. So you'll want to keep them relatively healthy or just have some way of mitigating damage. Now on third break, your life gets substantially more difficult. Because Romulus gets a 10 hit invulnerability. I want to point out that his damage cut from earlier was also 10 hits. Uh, but yeah. 10, 10 stacks of Invuln will waste quite a bit of time. That's two Brave Chains and some change. So you'll want someone with Invuln Pierce to get through it. Now there's a couple of ways of doing that, but I'll, I'll return to that in a second. You may have noticed he gave you some other buffs. Uh, it's like, what? You get card type buffs, NP gain, uh, star gen buff. No, nothing. Like It's okay. It'll buff your damage by a little bit but it will not be decisive. So there's a couple of ways to go about stripping away those invulns. You can either just attack into it, which I guess you could do that. It's gonna suck pretty bad though. Uh, another way is to use invuln pierce. Now, to get invuln pierce, you can either use a servant that just has it. Unfortunately, sabers that have invuln pierce are few and far in between at this point. And tragically, Ibuki Doji's not a thing yet. Now, the ideal servant is Musashi, but you can also use someone like Saber Shiki. Saber Shiki plays a little differently from the other attackers, so uh, you'll have to adjust your strategy for that. Now, another way of doing it, if you happen to have access to Sherlock, is to pop his NP as you enter Phase 3. Because it'll give you Invuln Pierce. And Sherlock himself can actually take a fair bit of abuse from the random enemies, even when he's not roamed up. So he's quite handy if you can run him. In fact, on stream I did a run with Kentoki Berserker with uh, with uh, Sherlock as well. Good times. 
Now back to attacker choice, you may have noticed that I'm running Saber Lily as an off attacker. Uh, that's just for memes. Like, Saber Lily is a terrible servant. One of the worst in terms of just, like, how expensive she is to deploy relative to what she does. Like, again, not, like, the worst servant. She has, she has like, barely above a 3-star stat line for a 4-star. But what she does is she can clear away trash mobs. And clearing away trash mobs actually buys you a fair bit of time. Both it in the sense that it shields you from their noble phantasms, and in that you can you can keep Romulus's enrage timer at bay. Now, if you look on YouTube, you'll see a, a number of other clears involving servants like um, like Brave Elizabeth, Muninori, uh, Bedivere. Uh, they work fine, although I'll note that the DPS requirements for a lot of these can be quite tight. I did a few test runs with uh, servants like Gawain and Saber Deermud and Rama, and it just was not working out. You have, like, it sucks trying to hit Romulus with those servants, but it's even worse trying to actually kill trash moms with them. Like, again, having... Like a five-star saber attacker really makes a difference in terms of your ability to just manage trash mobs with face cards. Of course, if you run a double attacker setup like I'm doing right now, one of which is AoE, you can mitigate that to an extent. But yeah. Sorry, I got sidetracked from the, the thing earlier about the attackers, huh? But yeah. Again, I would, I would focus on an NP attacker instead of a crit attacker because crits are easily frustrated in this fight. You need hand RNG in the first place, and even if you get it, you need to manage your crit stars, which, which is like one of the few things Romulus doesn't give you. It's just a real pain. Like, the benefit of an NP is that you can just sit on it as long as you want. You don't have to draw into your NP. And because Romulus is giving you free charge, it really pays to play around that feature of this fight. Now there are a few weird team building choices, some funny notes, one of which is that any servant that's innately Roman is treated as if they permanently have the Roman buff, obviously. So every turn they will receive Romulus's, <laughs> Romulus's buffs, but in exchange they will do next to no damage to him in direct combat. It's pretty funny. I actually did a meme run where I, I ran Nero in my front line and She could NP pretty regularly against the enemies, which is good for clearing out the trash mobs and getting that defense down on Romulus. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but it was it was a good laugh. Now the other the other weird quirk of this fight is that Bodica has a special buff. She has a bit of flavor in that she cannot become Roman. No matter how many times you whack Romulus, you don't get the debuffs. However, this isn't the slam dunk attacker you're looking for. Uh, Bodica is a rider with a non-damaging NP, and she can't benefit from the uh, Romulus buff effects. So she can't actually DPS him. Now at best, you can use her as like a sacrificial servant to get anti-Roman damage from her upgraded first skill. Maybe have her knock a few stacks of invuln off Romulus without making his timer go faster. But I would not recommend it. One other thing you could do is to run Jean because Jean has a spammable cleanse in her NP. Obviously, it also shields you from Romulus's NP, which is quite nice. And if you can cleanse on demand, you can actually make it so that you can feed off of Romulus's boss for multiple turns in a row. You don't need like a dead turn where you don't hit him. And this means that you can just put Jean's NP in front of your other and like in front of your other attackers and they'll have a clean slate to attack him from. But yeah, in general, I would recommend trying to find a Musashi for this fight. Just, rush, just, just run one as your main attacker. Like, this team composition I have here is really just to show that you don't need multiple high-end servants to make this clear work. You really just need to find a Musashi. And there's plenty running around right now. So I would try to get one on your friends list if you don't already. The rest of your team, you can fill out with Mostly replaceable servants. Again, Waver is a 5-star servant, but you don't need to have Waver there. He's just there to make my run go faster, because he can get 50% charge. 
uh, for a very quick start to the fight. But you can swap them out for something like Hans and stuff. And yeah, Saber Lily, that's just to show that any AoE Saber, preferably not Fergus, uh, can get the job done. I really did not feel like using Fergus for this fight, so, yeah. You know, Saber Lily will be the proof of concept. The rest of your team you can fill out pretty efficiently. Uh, also, remember to run the Atlas code, because A, you want the invuln, B, you want to just be able to cleanse on demand, in case you need to DPS uh, Romulus on, like, a particular turn. But yeah, apologies for this rambling commentary. Uh, it's late. And there's a lot of mechanics to juggle in this fight. But yeah, let me know if you found this useful. Like if you liked it, subscribe for more. And uh, come watch me on Twitch where I stream every weekend, 3 p.m. Pacific time, Friday through Sunday. But this week, on Wednesday, I'll actually be doing a special stream to wrap up the event on Mistake because I still have the 2021 exhibition quest left. Oh, you should have seen the 2020 ones. They were... They were pretty brutal, but that said, see you there. Peace.